color the serene stamper I'm gonna show you a project it's called a card in a box and this has been my January stamp club project and the girls have loved it so much that I wanted to share it with everybody on my YouTube channel so you can make one at home too this is not my original idea I first saw it on Monica Gale's website a Stampin' Up demonstrator in the UK and then I saw it again on another demonstrators website Tanya Bell and she's in Australia I'll have the links to both their blogs and my blog so that you can go visit them as well what makes this project really great is you can customize it for any occasion, special occasions, any season or holiday, and you can use the stamp sets and embellishments you already have. So, let's get stamping. So I'm using a piece of crumb cake cardstock, and I have cut it at 8 and a quarter by 9, and I've got my Simply Scored, and I have my marker set up at 2 and 1 eighths, 4 and a quarter, 6 and 3 eighths, and I'm missing a marker, but otherwise I would have it set at eight and a half. And if you haven't seen the Simply Score, the little tags just pop off and on. So I'm going to put this back at six and three eighths. There we go. Then I've got my scoring tool. So I'm just going to score down at two and one eighths, four and a quarter, six and three eighths. And then eight and a half. I'm going to turn my cardstock 90 degrees and I'm going to score at two and three quarters. So hopefully you can see this on camera. My score line, my two and three quarter score line, is here on my left and this is my eight and one quarter length of cardstock here so you want your card to be turned with eight and one quarter up here and your two and three quarter score line on your left because what you're going to do is you're going to put this in your paper cutter and you want to cut this down to six inches so you want to line it up at the six inches your two and three quarters mark is here and then just cut that down so I have my piece that I cut down at six and one quarter and I also had a piece like this and you wanted to save it and then what you do is you cut this you turn it so that you've got your little tab here and you're gonna cut this at three and one eighths and then all I do I forgot to cut this in half but that's all you do is just cut that right in half so this you don't need anymore and then this piece here we're going to go and we're going to cut the little flaps up. So you're going to have some taller flaps and you're going to have some shorter ones. You want to cut up on your score line to the middle score with the shorter side on the bottom. And you can use your paper trimmer for this too if you want to be more precise. And then this little tab part, we're going to cut that as well, but we're going to cut it right off. Just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fold down these three. And then I'm going to fold down this flap. I'm going to take my sticky strip. I'm going to add a piece just to this tab. And trim that off. And the trick when you're using sticky strip is just to rub on it. And then I use my paper snips just to grab a little corner. And then that top layer just peels right off. So I'm folding on the score lines as well. And I'm just going to line that right up like that so that's basically going to be your box I have also gone and I've cut out some designer series paper and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put that on the flap All of the supplies and the measurements will be posted on my January 20th blog post at www.serenestanford.com.
oh, your designer series paper, you're just going to pull a color out of that and that's going to be your back piece. And this is cut at 5 and 7 eighths by 2. And this is going to go on the back here and this is where you would stamp your message, write your message, plus add support to this. So I'm going to go ahead and add some snail adhesive. Make sure you get the little corners. on there perfectly. So when you close this up, I know we don't have anything in the box yet, it's going to be closed up like that. If you wanted to, you could decorate these panels as well, but for this video we're not going to. We're just going to show you how this comes together. So next we have these little tabs and you want to fold them in and out so they look like a little Z. Or if you're in the States, a Z. And I'm going to use sticky strip for these as well, just because I really want them to be sturdy and stay put. All right. So you're going to see that I have them on opposite ends on both pieces. So I'm just going to lift those up. And I'm going to tuck that inside the box. You really want to make sure you get this positioned in the right place because once it's on there, it's not going to come off with that sticky strip. And what I like to do is I just, oops, I'm just going to fold it a little bit and then push it down so that I know when it's closed it's lining up really well. So now we're going to do the next one. And no one's going to see these little bits of paper. We're going to decorate so no one's going to see these. And I do keep them relatively close to the top. Again, I'm just going to close that a little bit. And there we go. So I have my little braces. And now what we're going to do is we're going to fill this up and decorate it. Stampin' Up! has a wonderful new stamp set. It's called Just Saying. And we have um, framelits that match it. So we're going to use the Love Ya. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. And I'm going to stamp it with my black stays on. I'm going to grab my magnetic platform and my two plates and I'm going to put that on. Whoops, I put two on. Put that on. Line up my framework so it doesn't slide around anywhere. It's on there really well. And I'm going to run that through my big shot. Isn't that cute? Perfect for scrapbooking or card making. You can do so much with this stamp set. And while I have my magnetic platform out my Big Shot, I'm going to show you how I've made some of my hearts for this project. I just have a piece of scrap strawberry slush. I have two of my smallest hearts from the Hearts Collection Framelits. And I'm just putting them one inside of the other. Put on my plate. Crank it through. So when you take it off, that's what you end up with. So I've gone ahead and I've pre cut some hearts already. And these little hearts, I've taken my lovely labels, lovely little label stamp set, and I've stamped sweet and love, and I'm going to take a little key, so it's the key to my heart, 
I'm gonna just stamp that in black stays on on that heart. I've also taken my Hearts of Flutter stamp set and I've stamped on some scrap cardstock and there's framelits that match this. I actually don't have them at the moment. I thought I did, but I just stamped them and cut them out. Next, I took my bird punch and I stamped out a bird in real red cardstock. And then I stamped out some of the leaves in my old olive. And I want a couple more leaves, so I'm going to go ahead and just show you how I did that. And what would be the wing on the bird also makes a great leaf on a flower. So I'm going to cut out another wing, which I'll use for a leaf. And then I want to add some flowers to this project as well. So I'm using Flower Shop, which I absolutely love this stamp set. It has a coordinating punch. There is a way to line up your flowers so that they match with your punch. And I didn't realize that at the time that I got this. Um, and I have found a trick online. On each flower, there's actually um, a similar little bump on each one. And I've taken pictures of where I've put my dots, and I will post this on my blog. But each dot is the bottom of the flower, so when you line it up with your punch, it's going to line up perfectly. So let me demonstrate that for you. And we'll actually go ahead and use this one. Okay, so it's all inked up, and I have my purple dot on the bottom. Stamp it down. And now when I line up my punch, I'll know that that's the bottom, so it should line up to this bottom petal right here. And it lines up perfectly. So remember we had those little leaves, which were also the, which are really the wings, the bird. I'm just going to tuck that onto my flower. Then I'm going to take my basic black marker and I'm going to add an eye to my bird. We're going to start with the love ya. I'm going to put that on first. And in this little kit, there's a little tiny heart here. And I'm just going to use my strawberry slush ink pad. And there's my cute little heart. I'm going to add my bird. And now we're going to start building up. I'm going to use my Stampin' Dimensionals where I've removed my dimensionals. I'm going to use that as a little working area for putting on my adhesive so that I don't get it on my paper. I'm just going to add that right there. And I'm going to start layering my bigger pieces first. You only need a little adhesive. So you just build it as you go along, and I'm going to actually put these hearts on the front. So there's my box pretty much done and when you close it up, it closes up like that. If it's coming out a little bit, you would just make an envelope using the envelope punch board to compensate for that because that's the beauty of that um, product. You can make an envelope for any size that you need and then when people open it up, they'll have this lovely card to look at. And like I said earlier too, you can fill in these spots. And then you would write your little message on the back. If you're having a special birthday party, you can make it for a birthday. You can make it for Christmas. You can make it absolutely anything that you want. I think it'd even be cute if you put little photographs popping out of the box too. There's just so many things you can do with it. So give it a try. I hope you enjoy that and I appreciate you watching. Happy stamping. <laughs>